Howdy folks, welcome back. It's been a while since we did a diagnostic video, so I thought I'd bring you guys along for this 2015 Dodge Ram 3500. It's a cabin chassis truck. It's got a flatbed on the back there. Anyway, it's got the 6.4 Hemi gas V8 engine, and the check engine light is on. I pulled some codes up. It's got a bunch of, I don't know, body control stuff that doesn't really matter, but the important ones are the P0128 and the P2811, or sorry, P2181. Those are both related to the cooling system. So it has a thermostat rationality, error code, and then just general cooling system performance. This P0884, I guess it means that the TCM, the transmission control module, did not have power at startup, or power up. I don't know, some kind of a power feed problem to the TCM. Got to research that one. And then this P058C, not sure what's up with that either. That's something with the battery battery temperature monitor. So we may look into that. But I think the big thing is the, the thermostat problems. I suspect it needs a thermostat. So he told me that the, the check engine light came on. And then within about five minutes of driving it, that the coolant temperature gauge pegged out at hot. And it didn't seem like the engine was hot, but it just buried the needle. So to me, it sounds just like that Cadillac XLR that we did, where it had a bad thermostat, where the engine wasn't getting up to temperature, and the computer did all kinds of crazy stuff with the gauges because it didn't, it couldn't make heads or tails of what was going on. So I'm going to go for a little drive, and we'll see, we'll see what we see. I'm going to clear these codes out first, though, because I'm worried that the with the P0128 code set that it's going to turn the, the fan on all the time, the cooling fan. This has a computer controlled or electronically controlled viscous fan clutch. So I'll clear those out, we'll go for a drive and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, it just did it. So we've been driving for about 12 minutes and it flipped the thing to full hot and it's telling me yeah, it's giving me all kinds of warnings there. Can you see that? It turned the fan on full, which it's been off until now. So that's why I wanted to clear that code before we started driving. So oil temperature 125, coolant temperature 185. That's the highest it's gotten. It took about 10 minutes to get to 180. So I think that's our direction. It needs uh, some attention on the cooling system. I just pulled in the shop. So the temperature is staying steady at 185. It's not going any higher. The cooling fan should be on. But we're at idle, so it's not going to be affecting that temperature very much. Now the problem is the runtime maxes out at 655 seconds. So what's that? 11 minutes. And uh, I've been driving it for, I don't know, more like 20 minutes, I suppose. So I think. We'll do some checking here, but it, it looks like a thermostat. There's only a couple of options. Well, this is interesting. So I just shut it off and then turned it back on, and the temperature dropped to 134.6. So does that mean it's showing us a substituted value? I bet it is, or I bet it was. I bet during that whole test drive it was showing us a substituted value. Not sure. See, because the coolant temperature gauge on the cluster went way down too. Uh, I don't like that very much. It should show us actual value on the live data, otherwise what good is it? Right now it says 147.2. Come over here and try to hit that thermostat housing without getting caught in the belt pulley. It says 152, 154. Okay. All right, guys, let me do a quick recap in case you didn't follow what just happened. So we were looking at the live data on the Autel scan tool. And when we first started the truck, the coolant temperature was about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, ambient temperature. 
oil and coolant temperatures matched. When I went on the test drive, the coolant temperature started climbing up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That's around 90 degrees Celsius. This is around zero degrees Celsius. But the oil temperature stayed about 140. Anyway, after about 15 minutes, we had that event where the, the temperature gauge pegged over on high and the lights came on and we had, you know, chimes coming on and all this craziness. Brought it back to the shop, turned the engine off, turned it back on, and all of a sudden the live data showed the coolant temperature was at 140. There's no way that it dropped 40 degrees Celsius in two seconds that it took me to turn the key off and turn it back on. So what I think was happening is this data right here is fake. The computer was giving us its expected coolant temperature based on whatever parameters, drive time, RPM, fuel consumption, etc., etc. And at a certain point, around 15 minutes, it freaked out and said, this doesn't match what I expected to match. It turned on the check engine light, turned the gauge to high, and it st stuck the live data at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why it's showing us a fake coolant temperature instead of the actual coolant temperature. And I don't like that very much. So what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, gonna hook up a different scan tool. We'll use the Snap-on scan tool. I'll try the same test, and we'll just see if we get the same results. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I, I ordered a thermostat. I'm pretty confident that the problem is the thermostat. There's really only, what, two options? It has a bad coolant temperature sensor or a bad thermostat. Now, on this truck, when you replace the thermostat, you had to buy the thermostat, the housing, and the coolant temperature sensor all together. You can't buy the thermostat separately, so it's kind of pricey. Anyway, we're going to end up replacing both of them as a result of this, of this work, but I just want to confirm. And then as far as the codes go, so the P0128, that's, a, that's our rationality of the thermostat, and the P2181, those two go together as far as the cooling system. This one, the P0884, I was wrong about that. So what that code means is that the PCM got power while the truck was moving. So I'm guessing that what happened is when this check engine light and flashing things came on, that they just shut the key off and then restarted it while the truck was still moving. You know, maybe popped it in neutral or something. So I don't think we're gonna worry about that. The only other option is that it has an intermittent problem with power or ground to the PCM. We can figure that out later. This P058C, the battery monitor deal, uh, it's got an aftermarket battery, an interstate battery installed, so maybe we just need to reset that. I don't know. Uh, we're going to look into that. So, yeah, I'm going to do the test with the Snap-on tool. I'll be back in a minute. All right, same starting point on the Snap-on tool. The engine's fully cooled off, so the engine oil temperature 75, coolant temperature 82.4. All right, we're about eight minutes into the drive. It says we're at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but yeah, I've noticed that the voltage hasn't really changed, only the temperature readouts changed. And you see the oil temperature is still at 132. So we'll see, we're about halfway to where we were the last time. All right, we're back from the drive. Same route, same everything. You see it did not turn on the check engine light or send the coolant gauge to hot. And it still says 185 on the coolant temperature and 143 on the oil temperature. So I wonder if we just shut it off real quick and then turn it back on. Yeah, see? See that? 138. That's a fake value, it has to be. It has to be a fake value. See, the voltage value hasn't really changed. It's still in that two volt range. <laughs> oh man, that's ridiculous. What is the point of having the coolant temperature sensor, you know, if it's not gonna show us the real data? makes no sense yeah so like 
Now we're at 1.83 volts and it's 143 degrees. Before it was like 1.9 volts and it was telling us it was 185 degrees. That's crazy. Wonder how many coolant temperature sensors get replaced because of this. I mean, what's the point of having the data here if it's not the real data? If the PCM is just gonna gonna show us what it thinks it should be. That's crazy. Max, pup, what are you gonna do, buddy? Shake your head? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, anyway, I ordered the thermostat. It should be here tomorrow. The only one I could get today was a Dorman, and you know how that goes. Plus, it was way more expensive than the Mopar. So I'll bring you back when I have some parts. Well, there she is, straight from the mothership, made in Israel. One new thermostat. Anyway, I believe it says Moto, Moto Rad right there. Let's get her installed. Should be about done draining the coolant. I've got the upper radiator hose popped loose up here at the radiator. And this little clampy deal. I'm just working on getting it separated from the thermostat. Sounds like she's down to a dribble. Just good. Of course, you usually don't have to drain the coolant all the way if you're just doing the thermostat. Oh yeah, and the battery's gonna die in the in the light. I want to see if we can sneak it out of there without doing any, without taking a whole bunch of stuff off. I think we can. Come on, light. Just a few more seconds. This upper radiator hose is being a real dick, so we're just going to do an end run around it and take the whole thermostat housing and hose assembly off in one piece. I don't know, we're probably supposed to remove a bunch of this garbage. I didn't even bother to look at the, at the service procedure. But we're trying to beat the flat rate here, so we're going to cheat a little bit. should come out of there. There we go. Come on, little guy. Jeepers. Take me longer to get the stupid connector undone than it did to get the whole thermostat out. I don't know if this is definitive in any way, but if I block the little bypass here and then blow on the new one, nothing gets through. If I try the same trick on the old one. So that can't be good. All right guys, the new thermostat is installed. Everything's back together, buttoned up, looking good. Trust me, you did not miss anything exciting. And I'm just using my vacuum coolant refiller, but it didn't quite suck all of it back in. So I've got to, I don't know, get a funnel, I guess. Uh, that sounds terrible. Hey, lady. Hi. What's wrong? I'm hungry. Okay. What are you thinking? Tacos? Uh, probably. All right. I gotta go for a quick test drive and then write an invoice and I'll be done. Okay. And it's dark. Anyway, gotta go for a confirmation test drive. It says it's at 160. It's been idling for, what, seven minutes or something? I don't think that's right. It doesn't feel warm from the vents. So, anyway, I'll go drive and I'll bring you guys back. Hopefully we got this whipped. Well, I think we've got it. I only drove about a mile down the road. See, we're just about to hit our, what, 11 minute timeout on the engine runtime 
it's already up to 180 and the oil temperature is up to 147 it was never that high before yeah so the upper hose is still cold thermostat hasn't opened yet One fifty at the housing. One fifty three. That seems more reasonable. Well, the thermostat must have opened, which is good. I've driven maybe two, three miles further down the road, and it got up to two ten, and then it settled back down to one ninety, and then I've been sitting here idling for a few minutes, so it crept back up. But that's that's fine, I think. These newer vehicles like to run really hot, and you see now our oil temperature and coolant temperature they really match you know much closer than they have before we made it back and we're looking good it's temperature staying right around 210 that must be its happy place so I'm good with that alright guys I think we're good I don't see any leaks temperature is right where we want it I'm gonna top off the coolant maybe give it a quick bath and we're gonna ship it I don't have time to mess with the intelligent battery, whatever it is. I think it's right here. Uh, it actually has some codes for communication to that to that little unit, so possibly it's just bad. I don't know. They want it back, so we'll have to deal with that another time. Apparently I forgot to film an outro for this video, so I guess we better do that. There you go, folks. Diagnosing and replacing the thermostat on a 2015 Dodge Ram 3500 with the 6.4 Hemi gas engine, whatever it is. Anyway, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, generally speaking. When you have an engine that will not reach operating temperature, there's only a handful of things that can cause that to happen. And, you know, 99% of the time, it's going to be the thermostat. The curveball here was the live data. So I guess what's happening, or what was happening, is the computer, you know, it knows how quickly the engine should come up to temperature. And if it doesn't see that happening, you know, at the rate that it expects, it substitutes a value that is what it expects. It substitutes a curve that it, that it should be, the engine temperature should be following. And when you shut the key off and then restart it, now the ECM is starting at a different start point on that curve and apparently that if the temperature is high enough when it restarts at that higher start point it shows the actual data because at that point it's happy with it. So then the question is why does it do that and I do not have an answer. I just I've been trying to think about it like what advantage would there be for the computer to lie to you and tell you tell you the substituted value of the temperature and I cannot cannot think of a reason why it would want to do that like even if it wanted to lie and show you a different value on the gauge on the cluster that would be fine but why show it as a live data parameter in on the scan tool I just I don't know possibly if you have the for real you know Ytech Chrysler scan tool, it tells you that that's a substituted value and you wouldn't go down this, you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be on such a goose chase. I don't know, I don't have that tool, so I can't, I can't tell you. Anyway, it doesn't matter, you know. Generally speaking, you get a, a thermostat rationality code or a coolant system performance code, you're gonna need a thermostat. The only other options are, you know, a, a cooling fan that's stuck on or a bad coolant temperature sensor. You know, it's pretty easy to rule those out, so. Anyway, thanks guys for watching, and I will see you next time.